Hey guys, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. BAM! Until recently, I didn't know how to interface with a quadrature output rotary encoder. And now I did some research, I figured it out, and I'm hoping I could show you guys how this technology works and how to interface with the quadrature output rotary encoder. There are a couple different technologies for uh, rotary encoders, but the one I'm using I think is is either called incremental or mechanical. It's a, it's a Borns rotary encoder. I'll I'll put a link to the the part on their website, and it's it's very simple. It's got a whole bunch of detents. It's basically just like a potentiometer, except when you when you turn it, it just kind of clicks a bit. And uh, this is a, a mechanical kind of assembly because I'll go over it later. But there's actually like little pads inside that shoot out your signal as you rotate this along and by quadrature I'm gonna explain what that means as well so let's get right into it so the inside of your incremental encoder kind of looks like this around the shaft basically rotating as you rotate the shaft is you've got these different pads all the, like evenly spaced all the way around it and as you rotate it these this whole assembly will basically rotate and I'll show you how we use that to our advantage. Actually in the specific case of my encoder these pads evenly spaced around the shaft are all connected to terminal C and then I've got my A and B signals so I could actually as I move the shaft these pads will cross over one and then the other signal so it'll cross over one signal at a time and that will determine how you find out whether you've moved clockwise or counterclockwise here's the output of the rotary encoder and you can see that as I turn it clockwise my C my C terminal is gonna touch my A terminal first so we get that signal a, the A signal pops up first and then the C will actually make contact with the B terminal and that one will go up that signal will go high and eventually as I keep turning it the A signal will be lost because the contact between the the C terminal and the A terminal will be lost and it, it goes on and then you lose the B signal so this is the whole idea of a quadrature output it's not it's not like a binary output or a grayscale output quadrature means that inherently these B sig this B and the A signal here are out of phase so when I turn it one of them will be leading one of them will be lagging so using this leading and lagging principle this quadrature output all you got to do is figure out which came first which came second and then you could determine whether that's clockwise or counterclockwise and and do stuff accordingly here's the application note circuit I used to test out this concept this technology that I didn't know of before and when I bought this rotary encoder I, I checked out the data sheet I didn't know how to interface with it so I tried out that app circuit and scoped around and sure enough I figured it out and here is the actual breadboarded version of this app circuit and there's the encoder it's nice and beautiful um, from Borns a PEC 12R I believe and this is how it is I've got my whatever voltage input 5 volts in 0 volts there and I've got two test points for my A and my B terminal and then the C terminal you could see this yellow wire right there that's connecting straight to ground so let's show you some waveforms as I uh, turn this cute little bugger I've hooked a power in the oscilloscope to my circuit so I could show you guys and kind of monitor what's going on with this quadrature output so I'm basically supplying 5 volts to the A and the B pin and the C pin which is common is uh, as it touches these different points it's gonna tie them low so my my A and B points are actually active high or no active low meaning that they're high in in the idle state these bad boys are high and when I actually rotate it you'll see that the signal goes low so if I could just do a single capture this is me turning it counterclockwise so when I turned it counterclockwise you could see 
that the A signal goes low first, and then the B signal goes low. And then the A signal goes back up and the B signal goes back up. And that's, that's the properties of quadrature output, is that A is leading the B signal when I'm turning this bad boy clockwise. And when I do it counterclockwise, we get the B signal coming before the A signal. That's it, that's quadrature output. So now I hope you understand it. Okay, I know it's pretty low quality, but I just wanna show you guys how I can actually simulate all of the quadrants in quadrature output by slowly, very slowly and very carefully turning my decoder, or my, sorry, my rotary encoder. So right now it's in the idle state where it's on a single position, right? It's between, between one of the detents because this thing actually clicks. And if I very carefully turn this thing, you'll see A go low first, right there, then B, then A will go back up, and B will go back up. And that is quadrature output. I brought over the circuit that I had near the oscilloscope at my computer desk, and I set it up with my Arduino. I just broke out some pins, and I've got a very simple sketch here. Uh, it's, this is the least efficient way of processing or interfacing your quadrature output rotary encoder, but it's by far the simplest. It's by just polling. It's very simple. Basically, you just it uses up a lot of processing power because the Arduino is constantly looking at the quadrature outputs. And so because it's constantly constantly looking, it, it's, it's chewing up all the processing power. But yeah, you will, sure enough, you can do it this way. So I've, I've basically, in, in the code, I've got some setup stuff. I'm going to show you the serial output just to, to monitor what it looks like when I start spinning this shaft. And what's happening is just constantly, the Arduino is looking at the state of the A terminal and it's, it's, it's comparing it to its previous state and it's comparing it to the state of the B terminal. And whenever it sees the characteristic of a, a clockwise or a counterclockwise rotation, it will um, do something. And, and you, could be, you could very easily do that. Maybe I'll put the, the code snippet on the website or maybe I'll put the code snippet on the YouTube channel, but uh, super simple, but it chews up your processing power. So here's the, the 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 shaft here. I'm just rotating it, and you could see it's translating into the serial terminal, and that's because I got it to just whatever. It counts up as I start rotating this bad boy, and I could roll it back counterclockwise. Just counts down, and it's uh, yeah, it works. There you go. The best way to interface your quadrature output is to connect to interrupt pins. Right now, if you connect to any digital general purpose input output pin, you could do this polling method, the one that chews up all your processing power. But if you do interrupts, you could make it so that the Arduino only processes the quadrature output when is needed. So what happens is it, the, the fastest way is to just connect it to two interrupt pins and it basically, whenever it sees a change in the state, the Arduino is going to process it. So it uses far less processing because, I mean, you you might you might only flick this thing a, like once or twice, right? And uh, maybe two minutes later you'll flick it again. Or I don't know what it is, but you don't need the Arduino processing in between when there's nothing happening. So with interrupts, when you turn it, the Arduino sees the A line go low and the B line go low and and whatnot and then it will just decide like okay it sees the a go low and oh would you look at that it, the, the arduino will see the b go low next and uh that's when it decides that it's a clockwise rotation so i'll have to make a video about that some other time it, it'll take a bit more setup to actually get interrupts going so maybe i'll keep that for another video but i i just explained the concepts right there so that was the video about quadrature encoders. I showed you guys the technology of it, the concepts behind how these incremental encoders work with their quadrature funky outputs, and 
I showed you a circuit that I built along with the Arduino and how I went about scoping it and measuring it. And uh, I hope you guys benefited from this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, visit my website at www.tinmanelectronics.com where I hope I will uh, show you guys more of the content that I actually used to um, make my circuits. I found a couple of good articles and good resources on the internet. The Arduino homepage has a lot about their own libraries like the serial library to output on the screen like I showed earlier. And there was also this other guy, Paul, I don't know his last name, Paul something, but he had a very good website about uh, basically, I based my, uh, <laughs> my drawing off something I saw on his website because it's very, very helpful. And uh, he's actually got a simulation where you could click buttons and it shows you how this thing rotates and uh, how the quadrature output encoder works on the inside. I'm your host, Justin St. Amon from Tin Man Electronics. That's engineering. Gotta love it. You can take pictures with your scope now. I mean, like, that's crazy. Okay. Cut. Cut.